The programs that were used to create this video are Camtasia Studio 5 and Microsoft Windows Movie Maker. Hello and welcome to XNA tutorial number 8, part of the Paddles tutorial. And what we're going to do in this tutorial is to cover the individual game objects which are the paddle class and the ball class. And first we'll do the paddle class. And the paddle class will handle the paddles and the ball class will handle the single ball that will bounce around and we will only check collision in the ball class. Uh, the paddle class, the only thing we'll do is check the bounds of the paddle to make sure it doesn't fly off the screen. So, let's get started with the paddle class. Now this is a class for both player controlled and computer controlled paddles. So in, or, in order to determine which is which, we need to create another enumerated list called controlled, or a name of your choice. We need an attribute to hold a controlled object. We also need two vector2 objects to hold a position and velocity vectors. Then we need to create a variable to hold the speed of the paddle and this variable will be a type of float. And finally, we need an object of rectangle to hold the boundaries. Underneath the boundary object, let's create a public property that will get the boundary. And this is for the Paul class, so we have access to the object. And as for methods, we need to the usual constructor update and draw, which will Draw will have a sprite batch parameter and update will have a ball parameter. The constructor will take three arguments position of vector two, speed of type float, and player controlled of type bool. And one region for player controlled. In the update method, we have one region for player controlled and another region for computer controlled. And if statements inside those regions to appropriately control the ball depending on which controlled object it's set to. Let's go ahead and create the paddles class. So public class paddle, we need a enumerated list about their public enum controlled which is player comma computer now we need two vector2 objects and we add the using Microsoft at framework and those two objects are position and velocity Then we need a rectangle boundary Then we need a public property to get that boundary With a capital B So we need a get return boundary Lowercase b now we need a controlled object and we need a float speed. Now we need a constructor then we need to pass it a vector to position float speed and a player controlled of bool. So Position 
is set to POS. Velocity is set to vector two dot zero. This test speed is set to the past speed. And if our player controlled is set to true, the control objects is set to control dot player. Else controlled object is set to control dot computer. Now for the update method it's public void. Ball, we pass it a ball. And we have two regions player controlled and a computer controlled region. Okay. Inside the player control we need an if control is equal to control that player. And I'll add a comment here. Update the player paddle. Now we set controlled as two lists, two items in the controlled enumerated list. So if it's not one thing, it has to be the second thing no matter what. So we need an else. We do not need an else if. Else update the computer panel. Now we need a draw method. Public void draw with sprite batch. Add the using Microsoft XNA framework graphics. Sprite batch. Draw the paddles. Okay. Now we need to add code to the update method. So we need to start the method by setting the velocity vector to the zero vector because we do not want the velocity to update if we haven't pressed anything. So velocity will be set to the zero vector right away every game loop. So above every region set velocity is equal to vector two dot zero. Since we will do that for both paddles, it is above both regions. Now we need to fill the player controlled region. All the updating required for this region is accepting movement based on the keyboard object. If we press up, create the velocity with a negative y value. If we press down, create a velocity with a positive y value. This is where our float speed comes in. After we do that, we need to update the position vector by adding the velocity vector to it. Next game, we will add acceleration and what you need to remember is acceleration updates velocity, then velocity updates the position. And finally, we need, to, we need to update the boundary objects according to the position and the size of our paddle, which I chose 10 pixels by 50 pixels, 10 pixels wide by 50 pixels tall. Now, since we update the position inside the regions, but we need to update the boundary 